Hey guys, Dylan from Noble Records coming at you with another heavy rotation video. It is Easter Sunday here. Thought I would, um, you know, pull out some records I've been listening to lately, some things from the house and some recent pickups and show them off. Um, <clears throat> you know, my, my vision for heavy rotation in the beginning was to do one every week. And there's been a lot of times in my collecting career uh, where I was buying enough records to do a heavy rotation every week. Right now, I'm not really doing that. Um, I've got so many records, it's just kind of rare that something comes along that I don't have, that I really want, that I end up getting. Um, lately at the shop, we've been buying tons and tons and tons of records and collections and things like that. But none of it's really been anything that I want to take home just because I already have a lot of that stuff. So... Um, it's, you know, you get to a point to where you've collected so much that sometimes it's time to enjoy some of what you have. So I've, I've been trying to be very selective on what I buy. You know, I've had recently a bunch of people, people, you know, in the record collecting community, they know that you will buy like really killer records. They'll, they'll say, Hey, I'm selling this record and it's, you know, this amount of money. And so, uh, lately I've had a few people approach me about stuff that I probably previously would have just jumped on, but I've just like yeah I got a lot of records I can enjoy right now and I've been working so much and so hard I've not really been coming out here and listening to records as much as I would like so everything ebbs and flows it comes and goes all that stuff past couple months has been insanely insanely busy and also I've just been pretty content with what I have so that's a good place to be I think that that this season needs to come along every once in a while to where I'm telling you in the past month I have not bought much, so I'll show you some of the things that I have bought. This is um, a record called Highway. Really, really killer, 70s hard rock. Um, I've been after this record for a really long time. And um, like recently, I think one was on eBay, and <clears throat> I was like, I just wasn't feeling it. Like, I wasn't going to go and bid crazy amounts on a record. You know, I just was like, I'll find it when I find it, you know. And a friend of mine, Tommy, he um, watches this show and uh, follows me on Instagram. He found one for really cheap somewhere. Um, pretty crazy story. I don't know if he wants me to share it, but he was like, hey, you know, there's this record. Do you want it? And he sent it to me and we came up with the price that benefited both of us and great deal. Um, awesome stuff. So he made money. I got a good record for a good price. And that's where the happy happy spot is. So this is a great record. Um, I've been enjoying it the past few days. It's nice to get a record and listen to it a few times rather than just listen to it once and you're like, great, and you catalog it away and you listen to the next thing. And you know, sometimes you get so much that it's just like, you just want to listen to everything once before you catalog it and so you don't get to really spend a lot of time with it. So I've had fun with that. Another friend of mine, uh, he has a record instagram called placebo records his name christian he's a really nice guy i've actually met him in person uh, when i went down to florida last year we met up and um, had dinner together but he's a really good dude and he's like he collects music from all over the world like he's he collects stuff from like i mean countries i've never heard of it's crazy uh just because there's so much good music from everywhere um and he's got a really really um, broad reaching collection. So I think that's cool and important. But anyways, he had this record that he was selling and he asked me about it. It's a Steve Black, uh, Village Boogie. And this is like really killer Nigerian, um, Afro beat funk. It's amazing. I'm, I'm going to do a post on this on my find this record Instagram account. But man, this is a killer, killer one. And especially with like African records, I've not been buying as much because um, outside of Zambia, you know, a lot of them do sound the same, you know? <laughs> and so it's like, it's got to be something really good and unique that I don't have anything like it for me to buy. And this one is really funky, really good. And so he offered it to me and I initially was like, man, I'll pass or whatever. And then he came back a few weeks later and... Gave me a better price and I couldn't resist. So really cool record. Uh, great stuff. Real funky. And then he threw in to kind of sweeten the deal. This uh, witch introduction. Which I already have one of these. This is just the cover. Um, and and this is actually the the um, the autograph. Jaggery autographed this one. 
uh, the lead singer, but this is just the sleeve. He just autographed the sleeve. Mine, he actually autographed the cover. This is just, he just autographed the outer sleeve on this one. So mine has some scuzz on it and some tape and some junk. I actually got that one from Christian as well. So he said, I know you need an upgrade cover. So this is a really, really pretty nice cover, you know, for, for what it is. So that's a long story behind that. That's their private press first pressing of their first record. It's super rare. So I have one disc, two covers. It'll work. Next up, you know, every once in a while, I go down a deep, dark hole called the Towns Van Zant Hole. And there, if there's one artist that has messed me up more than any other artist ever, it's Towns Van Zant. He has messed me up. My brain. I just like, oh, there's a documentary about him called Be Here to Love Me. It's on YouTube right now. Um, I'll put the link, I'll pin it in the comments or something, but you need to watch that documentary. It's incredible. It talks about like why he was the way that he was. And if I had a genie in a bottle and I could have three wishes outside of, you know, wishing safety and health for my family for the rest of our lives and things like that. It would, if there was a selfish wish, it would be to write songs like Towns Van Zandt. There's nobody who has, and there's nobody who will. He's an absolutely incredible songwriter. I've never listened to an artist that that you could feel their pain. I mean, he's singing about things that like drug abuse and domestic abuse and like terrible life situations and bad luck and stuff that I really cannot personally identify with. I've never had any drug abuse issues or anything like that. But um, just understanding the feeling of failure or whatever, it's like you just feel that for him. You know, you feel what he's talking about, even though you've never experienced. That's pretty unique. Um, but anyways, that's part of the reason why I like Towns Benz. But I watched that documentary again. I've watched it so many times, but I saw that it was on YouTube. And man, a couple of weeks ago, I watched it and I was just like, this is heavy. It talks about his life and, and everything, like when he was a kid. He started getting into trouble doing some drugs and stuff when he was really young. His parents took him and put him in a psychiatric ward, and they did insulin shock therapy on him, and he it made him forget his entire childhood. It made him forget who his mother was. Like, it was crazy. Uh, and then he had to relearn basically everything past that point. And so his brain just kind of worked differently after that. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> I was listening to a podcast about him a while back and it was just like, you know, you couldn't write songs like that unless you lived that life. You know what I mean? The life that he had. Crazy stuff. But I, I, I've been listening to a lot of Towns Van Zandt lately. I go in and out of it, you know. And alongside of that, um, I've been, I was looking up, I, I was watching the Be Here to Love Me documentary and it was talking, the inter there was interviews with his son. His, name, his son's name is JT. And his son is in the documentary. He's fly fishing, talking about his dad. And he's very articulate, very sharp. And I was like, man, that's crazy to see like what Towns Van Zandt probably would have been like if he hadn't been on so many drugs and stuff and, and alcohol and things like that. So I did some research on his son and his son's actually like this um, really successful fly fisherman. And he does all this really interesting stuff. I won't get into all that. That's like, like I said, this is a deep, dark hole. <laughs> But this has been my research hole for the past couple of weeks. But he actually, like, um, in, like, the Gulf there in Texas, he is a um, fishing guide. And then he also does, like, a bunch of stuff. He's sponsored by Yeti. And so Yeti has done some really cool, like, the cooler and, and thermos or whatever. They've done some really cool videos with him. So there's a video where he talks about his dad's guitar and he plays it and stuff. And he can play and sing and all that stuff. But... He just seems like a really genuine, cool person that's really driven, really passionate. And it's just really, and he looks just like Towns Van Zandt. So it's cool to see what he would have been like maybe if he hadn't had, like Towns Van Zandt would have maybe been like if he had, you know, not had all the issues that he had. So anyways, but I've been down that deep dark hole, but he also has a podcast. <laughs> Towns Van Zandt sign as a podcast. Also. And on his podcast, he started talking about Terry Allen, which I love Terry Allen. Terry Allen is a, he's an acoustic singer, songwriter, country, well, not acoustic, he plays piano, but he has that more like grassroots, not super high produced country sound. You know what I mean? He swam in the same circles as Towns Van Zandt, Guy Clark, all that stuff. And he was like an all, all around artist. He play, he did all sorts of things. He paints, he does sculptures and all that stuff, but he also writes songs. 
This is uh, Lubbock on Everything by Terry Allen. Um, there's a song on here that is maybe my favorite country song. One of them, uh, Amarillo Highway, the first song. Uh, I'm a man handling, pan handling, post holing, high rolling, dust bowling, daddy. That's how it goes, and it's so good. I love it. I sing it all the time when I'm driving. Uh, but anyways, so this this is a copy. I found this in New York City when I went uh, maybe five years ago. And I couldn't believe it. I got a great price on it, and it's autographed by Terry Allen. I was so shocked at the time. I think it was like 40 bucks, which this is a pretty hard record to find, and it autographed. I was so stoked to find it. Um, but this is a great country record. Love it. I've had this for many years, but the one I really wanted was this Juarez. He had this album called Juarez, and I ended up breaking down and buying one on Discogs. So I was like, I've not been buying records, and this is a decent price. I'm just going to grab one. There, they only made 500 of these. So this is he when he originally released this album. This album is like, um, it's very very unique, very different than most other country albums. It's written like a play, you know, like there's acts and scenes and all that stuff. It's very compelling, but you have to really pay attention. It's a very interesting piece of work. Um, was when it was originally released, it was released as 50 individual box sets that had like all these art prints and stuff in it. I would kill for one of those original 50 box sets, but I don't even know. Only one has ever sold on eBay. It's really rare, all that stuff. They And then he did 500 of these um, just private press records. So this one came before Lubbock on Everything. Very interesting, very cool. It is all involving with all the arts. That's a very cool thing. There's not many people like that that do like everything like that. And he's a very interesting person. He's still alive. And Towns Van Zandt's son interviewed him on his podcast. It was interesting to hear um, him talk about all those days and all that stuff. So uh, I think he, he was also talking about how like when um, uh, Guy Clark died, I think that's my rooster cr uh, crowing out there. Uh, I think he did a sculpture with Guy Clark's ashes or something like that. Really interesting. But very cool. If you ever go down that, um, I don't know if you call it outlaw country. But uh, country rabbit hole, I've been going down. Like, I have not, like, my whole life, I think, me and Logan were talking about this the other day, my, my shop manager. We're talking about how, you know, when we were young, there was that 90s country, you know, the the Toby Keith, rest in peace. Um, you know, what's his name? Kenny Chesney, Garth Brooks, all that stuff. And I liked it when I was little. I got a long story about it. Um but uh, I liked it when I was young, but it it, it kind of got old fast and it was pop country and it wasn't like it was real country. And I just, every time I listened to country past the age of 14, I was like, I'd roll my eyes like, this is stupid. My mom listened to country and I just saw it as like mom music, you know, it wasn't cool. It was just like, Pfft. you know, and uh, now, they're, you know, learning about some, especially like Towns of Zant. There's so much cool old country, you know, a lot of the old Waylon stuff. Yeah, I've always loved Johnny Cash, though. That's one thing. I've always loved Johnny Cash. But I saw him as, like, something a little different. But anyway, so now, like, that whole thing, the Heartworn Highways, uh, you know, Guy Clark, Towns Van Zandt, Steve Earle, um, Waylon Jennings has a couple like that. You Just that specific sound of that old um, country, the good stuff, you know what I mean? There's a video on YouTube. I'm going to link I'm going to put that one in this I'm going to pin this one in the comments as well. And it's a video of Johnny Paycheck um playing acoustic uh with Ronnie Hawkins and he's they're just sitting and talking. And Johnny Paycheck never played acoustic. He always played this like um like uh, honky tonk electric guitar stuff. He never played acoustic. He's like never been recorded at all playing acoustic. And he's playing two songs. Oh my gosh. Um, there's one called Sharon Ray that he wrote about, I guess, his wife who raises kids. And the, the actual song is all, you know, honky tonk country, kind of up, up tempo. But he sings this like torn down acoustic version. And it is just heart wrenching. It's so good. And what sucks is that it's part of this documentary called The Hawk. 
and I can't find any information about it. I can't find the documentary anywhere. But it is, uh, it is so freaking good. It is so good. So, anyways, check out that video. And he sings another one. It's a, um, gosh, I'm, 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 I'm losing my mind here. I'm trying to remember what this was. A loser never knows that he's losing till he's lost. It's too late to win. I'll leave the bottle on the bar is the other song he sings. I think that's originally by, um, George Jones or anyways, I can't remember, but it's not George Jones. It's, um, man, sorry. Sorry, I'm brain farting all this stuff out. I'm not even showing records anymore. This is the the ramblings of a madman. I'm just talking about music, just riffing. But uh, Merle Haggard. It's uh, I'll leave the bottle on the bar by Merle Haggard. Um, anyways, so check all that out. But he does like bear, like torn down acoustic versions, and it's so freaking good. And it's so sad that he never recorded a record that way because it is awesome. And the rest of his stuff, I just don't like it that much. But those songs are so good. And I've also been listening to like a lot of like Waylon Jennings and stuff, which I've never really tried to listen to. Anyways, let's get into more records. I'm so sorry. Um, this is a killer bootleg that I got. It's called uh, Deep Purple on the Wings of a Russian Fox Bat. Um, I got, I think I got like three or four of these in that huge bootleg collection. And we were listening to the shop with listening to this in the shop the other day. And I sold one on whatnot and I had two in the shop. And this was so good. It was so, so, so good. I don't think it's soundboard, but really good sounding recording. And I ended up keeping one and the other one immediately sold like as soon as we put it on. Someone's like, what the heck is this? It's so freaking good. So that's a good one. Um, This is one on the ECM label. This is Julian, Piester, uh, Pepo, Matoto, Love, Love. You can see it and look it up. This is on the ECM label, which I'm not like... um super into a lot of that stuff it's all usually like jazz funk fusion mostly like jazz fusion stuff but uh anyways it's a cool record um but I, I was looking it up and like a lot of times if i'm pricing records and i look something up on discogs i'll hit play listen to a couple tracks or whatever as i'm going so i priced this one out put it in the stack i was i've never seen this ecm before so i was like this could be good i was listening to it and this is like this almost sounds like a library record it's like jazz funk it's really really killer so I was like, no, nah, I might have to keep that one. So it's good. I'm excited to spend more time with that one. Um, since I've been not buying expensive records, I have been, I go to Goodwill all the time. So I've mentioned this before. My son loves DVDs. He collects like kids DVDs. So like his favorite movies are Open Season, um, Turbo, uh, P Mr. Peabody and Sherman, um, Cars, that movie home like he likes those animated toy stories stuff like that and he collects those dvds and even if he already has them like he likes to have all like if they got a different cover or case or something like that and even if he'll have like five of the same one he didn't care he loves he just loves having them so um i regularly stop in goodwill and even if i don't find records i always find something like that so i'm always buying stuff for him and um i was in goodwill the other day and i saw a bunch of like iranian records so this is one that I saw, and I was like, man, this has got to be something good. I didn't know what it was, but I was like, this has got to be good. And um, took it home and like started doing research on it. And some of these, like they didn't have any English on them at all, so you don't even know how to look them up. You have to got to look them up by their matrix numbers. So anyways, this one um, is called Gagoosh, and really interesting. I actually uh, ripped this onto my Find This Record YouTube channel, and I got a copyright strike. You can't listen to this anywhere, but it's like... Really, it's all Iranian singing, but there's like some tracks that are like a little bit more psychedelic. Some are like real funky. Some are dance. Some are like classical, but they're all different like styles of music. And it's really, really cool. And it's this is like a probably $250 record. Got it at Goodwill for 49 cents. I got a big stack of Iranian records, maybe that big. I think it got like eight or nine. All 49 cents each. And some, there's some in there that are pretty valuable. Um, there's a whole story behind why those Iranian records are valuable. Um, it's like a whole thing. They got outlawed and banned and all this stuff. Um, like back in the early eighties, I think. And, uh, so they're, they're just really rare. That's a very small nutshell version. 
This is one I found in a collection recently. Uh, Lester Bowie fa uh, Fast Last. This is on that Muse label. Anything on this Muse label, give it a second look. You know, this has got some good names on it. Cecil McBee, Charles Shaw. Uh, just great stuff. This is a white label promo, but I got this. I had a, bought a huge collection of mostly like Psych and prog and and uh, ambient and electric electronic like experimental music but there's some a few jazz records in there this is one of them and this is really really killer like on the soul jazz funk type stuff it is fantastic i've enjoyed that i've also been like cleaning all my records so if you see this quality uh record pressing inner sleeve this is a little insider trading tip um uh, Acoustic Sounds has their sleeves on their website. So if you are looking for some, um, and they've not told me to advertise this in any way, but that's where I've been getting them because that's the cheapest and best sleeves that I can find anywhere. So I've been, I bought a th huge boxes of a thousand of them, you know. So <clears throat> anyways, we're going to keep going. This is one I just listened to. I've had this for a couple months now. This is called Dreamies. Um... Uh, Aura graphic, graphic entertainment, an incredible mental experience. So this is a really cool, like psychedelic record. It's really strange. Side A is one long song. So program 10 and 11 is what it's called, but it's one long song on one side and then another long song on the other side. But it's almost like if the Beatles were a little bit more electronic and a lot more psychedelic. And then there's like sound clips like weird sound clips from like the news and stuff that are kind of intertwined in it. That sounds lame, but it is really good. It's cool. It's a cool psychedelic little trippy record. Um, I just listened to that this morning. Speaking of country, Jerry Jeff Walker, Mr. Bojangles. I've been looking for a clean copy of this forever. This one is in the shrink is stone mint. Just beautiful, beautiful copy. There's Jerry Jeff Walker. I mean, there's in that world I was talking about before with the towns as and guy Clark and, and all that stuff. You know, there's some really good songwriters that you kind of pass over a lot. Like Jerry Jeff Walker, I've passed over his records for years. He's whatever. But he has some really, really good records. Chris Christopherson has some great records. You know, really good songwriting stuff. Um, this is kind of funny. This is one of my absolute favorite records of all time, Electric Mud. Um, in that same collection um, that I was talking about before with the jazz funk and all that, there was this, this is a super clean, cleanest one I've ever seen, even though there's some ring wear. It's got the booklet and everything, which you never see that booklet in there. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show it to you real quick. But this is a clean copy. I had a decent copy, but this one was ended up being cleaner than mine. So I put my copy in the shop. Mine did not have the booklet. So this is the, the booklet. Um, and you really don't ever see the booklet. Uh, I've never, I don't think I've ever found one with the booklet inside and intact. Um, in all the years, I've found so many of these and just the booklet's never there for some reason. Um, so anyways, was stoked to find one with the booklet. As soon as I saw this in that guy's collection, he was the type of collector that would have definitely kept the booklet, you know? So I was like, oh yes. And sure enough, it was in there. Um, somebody brought this in the shop the other day and traded it in. This is, a uh, Stooges, uh, the Russian bootleg of, the Stooges and me being a Stooges psychopath, I had to keep that one. Um, and then last but not least, my buddy Lonnie, he's a local digger. He's digs everywhere at yard sales, flea markets, all that stuff. And anytime he finds a record on this justice label, um, it's a North Carolina private press garage rock, mostly label. And I collect everything on that label. I think there was like 27 to 30 releases, something like that, on that label. Some of them are not even on Discogs, so I don't even know. I have found a few Justice releases that aren't on Discogs, but they're really rare, very amateur. <laughs> you know, There's some really good ones. There's some really bad ones. This one's kind of eh, not that great, but this was the first release they ever did, so... Um, it was on the list. I needed it. So he brought it to me and I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to have it. So he got that. He found that in a yard sale or something at some point this week. But anyways, I bought, I bought some other records too. Mostly everything's for the shop though. And, um, just been enjoying life. Another little shout out, um, to this Acid Archives book. So Dom, you know him seeking a thread 
he started this thread for the Acid Archive series. I don't know if you've seen it, but he basically wants to cover, you know, every record that was in the Acid Archives. And so different uh, vinyl community channels will, will chime in and cover one or two or three records or whatever. And I did one, and that's like the lowest performing video I've ever done, which I'm fine with. I don't care. I don't do it for the views. Everything I do really is to... My goal is to feed my family and spread the good news of of good records that nobody's heard of. That's my like that's my goal in life. So if you haven't seen that video, it's maybe like one or two videos back. Check that one out. And then also, um, shameless plug here. We did just have this is the record store day version, but we did we just did a pre order for our exclusive of Dragonfly. So we. Uh, teamed up with Garrison. It's going to be a really killer, awesome, like splatter, black and green vinyl. So check that out on our website if you haven't pre-ordered one. And then uh, we still have some copies of this. This is last month's exclusive Samuel Prody if you haven't gotten it. But anyways, thank y'all for everything. And I hope that you have a great Easter and you spend time with the family and have a good time and you listen to some records and all that stuff. But watch that documentary. Be here to love me. It's really good. See you guys.